Caroline welcome to my channel in today's video I'd like to read uh, a part of this book the human body an illustrated guide to its structure function and disorders and I'd like to read this part which is about the brain so I hope you enjoy it and let's dive in The brain, in conjunction with the spinal cord, regulates both non-conscious processes and coordinates most voluntary movement. Furthermore, the brain is a site of consciousness, allowing humans to think and learn. Brain structure. The largest part of the brain is the cerebrum, which has a heavily folded surface, the pattern of which is unique in each person. The grooves are called sulky when shallow and the fissures when deep. Fissures and some of the large sulky outline four functional areas called lobes, frontal, parietal, occipital and temporal. A ridge on the surface of the brain is called a gyrus. The centre of the brain contains the thalamus which acts as the brain's information relay station. Surrounding this is a group of structures known as the limbic system which is involved in survival instincts, behaviour and emotions. Closely linked with the limbic system is the hypothalamus, which receives sensory information. The skull, hypothalamus, is situated under the thalamus, which has many important functions, including regulating body temperature and controlling the automatic, autonomic nervous system. Cerebrum, largest part of the brain with connections to all parts of the body. Meninges, Three membrane, the three membranes that surround and protect the brain and the spinal cord made up of connected tissue. Pituitary gland, called the master gland, controls many other glands. The thalamus, the thalamus, area that relays nerve signals to cerebral cortex. Brain stem regulates vital functions such as heartbeat and respiration. Cerebellum, second largest part of the brain, responsible for balance and posture, situated behind the brain stem. Brain structures, a section down the middle of the brain reveals its inner structures. Although these structures look very different in the diagram above, they are all made up of brain tissue, which is composed of billions of neurons. There are two types of brain tissue, grey matter and white matter. These 360 degree views show each aspect of the brain clearly. The front and back views reveal the longitudinal fissure dividing the brain into two hemispheres. The surface of the cerebrum is folded into ridges and grooves. The cerebellum lies beneath the cerebrum. The brain stem and top of the spinal cord are also visible. visible. Corpus callosum 
largest of several bundles of nerve fibres that connect the two brain hemispheres. Blood supply to the brain. The brain accounts for 2% of total body weight, yet it requires 20% of the body's blood. Both oxygen and glucose are transported by blood. Without these essential elements, brain function quickly deteriorates and dizziness, confusion and loss of consciousness may occur. Within only four to eight minutes of oxygen deprivation, brain damage or death results. The brain has an abundant supply of blood from a vast network of blood vessels that stem from the carotid arteries which run up each side of the neck and from two vertebral arteries that run alongside the spinal cord. Circle of Willis A ring of communicating arteries known as the Circle of Willis encircle the base of the brain. This arterial ring provides multiple pathways to supply oxygenated blood to all parts of the brain. If one pathway becomes blocked, blood can be supplied from an alternative artery in the circle. Blood supply. The brain has an extensive blood supply from two front and two rear arteries, as illustrated in this colour, three-dimensional magnetic resonance and geography, or MRA scan. The blood vessels are coloured in red. Here they are seen supplying oxygenated blood to various parts of the brain, which is shown as the blue area. Protection. The brain has several forms of protection. It is shielded by the three protective membranes or meninges that develop it. And the ventricles or chambers in the brain produce a watery medium within the skull known as cerebrospinal fluid. CSF that absorbs and disperses excessive mechanical forces which might otherwise cause serious injury. An analysis of the chemical constituents and flow pressure of CSF has offered vital clues in the diagnosis of many diseases and disorders of the brain and spinal cord such as meningitis. Meninges, the outermost membrane, dura mater, contains blood vessels. The middle layer, arachnoid, consists of connective tissue and the innermost membrane, pia mater, lies closest to the brain. Pia mater, arachnoid, cerebrum, blood vessel, dura mater, venous sinus, the skull. Cerebrospinal fluid flow. The soft tissue of the brain floats in cerebrospinal fluid, CSF, within the bony casing of the skull. CSF is a clear liquid which is renewed four to five times a day. It contains proteins and glucose that provide energy for brain cell function, as well as lymphocytes that guard against infection. The CSF protects and nourishes both the brain and spinal cord as it flows around them. The fluid is produced by the cor choroid plexuses in the lateral ventricles, which drains into the third ventricle. It then flows into the fourth ventricle located in front of the cerebellum. Circulation of the fluid is aided by pulsations of the cerebral arteries. 
site of production of choroid plexuses. The CSF found in the ventricles in the brain is produced in the clusters of thin-walled capillaries known as choroid plexuses. These capillaries line the walls of the ventricles. Direction of flow. Fluid moves from the brain's lateral ventricles into the third and fourth ventricles. The fluid then flows up the back of the brain, down around the spinal cord and up the front of the brain, as indicated by the arrows. Circulation around spinal cord. Aided by a vertebral movement, the CSF flows downward along the back of the spinal cord and in the central canal and then returns upward along the front of the spinal cord. Site of reabsorption, arachnoid granulations. After circulating around the brain, CFS, CSF is reabsorbed into the blood via structures known as arachnoid granulations, which are projections around the arachnoid layer into the large sagittal sinus or cerebral vein. Brain structures. The brain comprises about one fifth, fiftieth of the weight of the whole body, averaging 1.4 kilograms or three pound two ounces in adults. Anatomically, it has four main structures, the large domed cerebrum, the deeper inner diencephalon, consisting of the thalamus and nearby structures, the cerebellum to the lower rear and the brainstem at the base. External brain features. The brain's most obvious feature is the cerebrum, which makes up more than four fifths of all its tissues. It has a grooved appearance due to its heavily folded surface, which is called the cerebral cortex. The cerebrum partly envelops the thalamus and nearby structures, diencephalon, and the brainstem below this. The smaller cerebellum forms about one tenth of the brain's whole volume. It is mainly concerned with the organisation of motor information being sent to muscles to make movements smooth and coordinated. Brain print. A scan reveals a unique brain print, the pattern of cerebral grooves and bulges that is different in each person. Frontal lobe. Speech production, movement initiation and aspects of personality are based in this lobe. Lateral sulcus. Groove running along upper part of the temporal lobe. Superior temporal sulcus, upper of two main sulci, shallow grooves that divide chief gyri bulges of temporal lobe. Temporal lobe, recognition of sounds, their tones and loudness takes place in temporal lobes. They also play a role in storage of memory. Pons, upper portion of brainstem. Brainstem, lowest, mainly automatic region of brain. Cerebellum, this little brain is involved with timing and accuracy of skilled movements and controls balance and posture. Inferior temporal sulcus. Lower of two main sulci, shallow grooves that divide gyri or bulges of temporal lobe. 
occipital lobe. This area is mainly concerned with analysing and interpreting visual information from sensory nerve signals sent by the eyes. Parietal occipital fissure. Fissure, deep groove, that demarcates border between the parietal and occipital lobes. Post-central gyrus. A ridge or bulge on the brain's surface is called a gyrus. The post-central gyrus, just beyond midpoint from front to rear, is an important anatomical landmark. Parietal lobe. Area in which bodily sensations such as touch, temperature, pressure and pain are perceived and interpreted in the region called the somatosensory cortex. The hollow brain. The hollow brain. The brain in a sense, is in a sense hollow. It contains four chambers known as ventricles filled with cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. There are two lateral ventricles, one in each hemisphere, and the fluid is produced here. It then drains via the intraventricular foramen into the third ventricle, which is situated close to the thalamus. From here it flows through the cerebral aqueduct and into the fourth ventricle, which extends down between the pons and cerebellum into the medulla. The total volume of CSF in the ventricles is about 25 millilitres. Circulation is aided by head movements and pulsations of the cerebral arteries. Grey and white matter. The bulk of the cerebrum has two main layers. The outer pale grey layer, often known as grey matter, is the cerebral cortex. It follows the folds and bulges of the cerebrum to cover its entire surface. Its average thickness is 3 to 5 millimetres and spread out flat, it would cover about the same area as a pillowcase. Deeper within the cerebrum are small islands of grey matter. These and the cerebral cortex are composed chiefly of the cell bodies and impulse collecting projections or dendrites of nerve cells, neurons. Beneath the cortex's grey matter is the paler white matter forming the bulk of the cerebrum's interior. It is composed mainly of nerve fibres. Grey matter, outermost layer of cerebral cortex containing an estimated 50 billion neurons and perhaps 10, 10 times as many supporting cells. White matter, interior. Here, axons or fibres of neurons run up from lower areas and project down from neuron cell bodies of cortex. Corpus callosum. Largest of several bundles of nerve fibres called commissures, which connect specific areas of the two halves or cerebral hemispheres of the upper brain. Basal ganglia, islands of grey matter deep in cerebrum. Motor nerve tracts. Large fibre bundles that carry instructions to the movements down to the spinal cord and that cross over in lower brain stem. The brain stem. Vertical section. A vertical slice through the middle of the brain reveals the paired structures, outer grey layer and inner white matter. The corpus callosum contains more than 100 million nerve fibres and is the main bridge between the two hemispheres.
basal ganglia. These structures include the lentiform nucleus, putamen and globus pallidus, chordate nucleus, subthalmic nucleus and substantia nigra, the latter two not seen in this view. They are a complex interface between sensory inputs and motor skills, especially for semi-automatic movements such as walking. View from above. The lateral ventricles have frontward, backward and side-facing horns, or cornua. Seen between them in this view is the central third ventricle. Intraventricular foramen. Opening through which fluid drains from lateral to the ventricle. Third ventricle. Cerebral aqueduct, canal-like tube through which fluid fl flows into fourth ventricle. Pons, lateral ventricles. Cerebellum, fourth ventricle. Vertical links. Sheathed or myelinated nerve fibres organised into bundles known as projection tracks transmit impulses between the spinal cord and lower brain areas and the cerebral cortex above. These nerve tracks pass through a communication link called the internal capsule and also intersect the corpus callosum. In addition, similar bundles pass through the upper outer zones of the white matter from one area of the cerebral cortex to another. These association tracks convey nerve signals directly between different regions or centres of the cortex. Corona radiata, a zone where projection fibres spread out in a fan-like shape. Cranial nerves, Grey matter, cerebral cortex, receives nerve impulses via projection fibres. White matter contains both projection and association fibres. Internal capsule, a region of compact bands of nerve fibres. Projection pattern, the projection fibres pass through the upper part of the brain stem then fan out and travel to the cerebral cortex. The thalamus and brainstem. The thalamus sits on top of the brainstem and is shaped like two eggs side by side and lies almost at the heart of the brain. It is a major relay station that monitors and processes incoming information before this is sent to the upper regions of the brain. The brainstem contains centres that regulate several functions vital for survival. These include heartbeat, respiration, blood pressure and some reflex actions such as swallowing and vomiting. Thalmus, midbrain, pons, brainstem, medulla and the spinal cord. Brainstem. The brainstem's main regions are the midbrain, pons, and medulla. And I think that's where I'm going to stop the video. And I hope you enjoyed this part of this book. And I hope you join me again soon for another video. Thank you for watching. Bye.